the Time Mage is trying to take over the kingdom. To protect it, you'll need to learn how to play Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. Thank you for joining me at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Melissa Delp. Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is a cooperative tower defense game for one to four players that plays in about 60 to 90 minutes. It's designed by Helena Hope, Sun Foon Lim, and Jesse Wright, and published by Lucky Duck Games in connection with Ironhide Game Studio. Lucky Duck sponsored this how to play video. Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is a campaign game with 10 scenarios. In this video, I'm going to go over the basic setup, the setup for scenario one, and then the basic gameplay. First, set up the tower supply area. Separate tower cards by class, the type of damage it does, and by level. Then make a grid with four columns of tower stacks one column for each class of tower, and one row for each level of tower, starting with level one on the bottom. The level four towers are used only in certain scenarios. Under each tower column, place the damage tiles or soldier meeples that correspond to that tower class. Each player chooses a color and takes that colored player marker and the corresponding transparent building site cards. The game board setup and the placement of building site cards is specific to each scenario, so I'll cover that in the scenario setup. Each player also chooses a hero and takes the hero miniature, board, and corresponding damage tokens. On the hero board, place a heart token on the maximum health spot. The hero board also shows which towers the players start with. The more players in the game, the fewer towers each person begins with. Each player should also take a helper card. These are player aid cards that have some of the iconography on them. Next, you're going to choose your scenario and your difficulty level. The difficulty levels impact the amount of health the kingdom has and if the players start with extra resources. The three star level is the suggested difficulty. You can decrease the difficulty by choosing the one or two star levels, or you can increase the difficulty by playing Heroic Challenge. You can even make it tougher by adding Iron Challenge on top of Heroic Challenge. When you set up a scenario, you'll follow the specifics for creating the path, building sites, and spawn stacks. Here is how you set up Scenario 1, Rift in Time. For this scenario, you won't use special ability tiles, spells, the level 4 towers, or the hero Lilith. Return these components to the box. For the hordes, randomly select three green horde cards labeled with a zero for wave zero. From the wave 1 cards, randomly select four yellow and four red. Portal cards are unique to each scenario. Find the portal cards with the large 1 label for scenario 1. There should be two cards for this scenario. The smaller number is for setting up the spawn stack. To set up the spawn stacks, follow the diagram in the scenario booklet. It's important that the cards are in the right order. From bottom to top, you should have two red horde cards, then the number two portal, then a red, yellow, and red horde card, the number one portal, and finally three yellow hordes on top. The green horde cards will be used during the initial map setup. Page five shows the diagrams you'll use. For scenario one, you'll arrange path tiles A2, A9, A11, and G3 in this pattern. The spawn stack and two spawn tokens go at the top of the path and the exit tile goes at the bottom of the path. Put the three green horde cards into horde trays, enemies side face up and place them on the indicated spaces. The player count diagrams show how many crystals, 
special abilities and spells the team starts with, and the arrangement of building sites. For a four-player game, the building sites are arranged this way. Now that everything is set up, let's talk about gameplay. Portals are opening across the land, spewing out hordes of enemies. You and the other heroes need to protect the kingdom by eliminating the enemies and the portals. Each round in Kingdom Rush Rift in Time has six phases. There's no set number of rounds in the game. You'll continue playing until either you meet the victory condition for this scenario, which is usually eliminating all of the portals, or if you meet one of the loss conditions. You immediately lose if all the heart tokens for your kingdom have been removed, or if a portal card or a boss miniature enters the kingdom by passing the exit tile. Let's look at each phase in a round now, starting with the first phase, spawn new hordes. Your enemies are relentless. At the beginning of each round, except the first round, you'll spawn new enemies on the board. Each spawn token, going from lowest number to highest, flip one card from the corresponding spawn stack and place it into a horde tray. Then place the tray in the path space directly in front of the spawn stack with the purple edge of the card parallel with the nearest exit. If the space is occupied by another horde tray, place the tray in the next available space. Hero miniatures do not block path spaces. If you need to place a horde tray on a space with a hero, move the hero one space onto an adjacent empty space or building site. If there's no available empty space, return the hero to the player's board. Now you're ready to go to phase two, play tower and hero cards. This is the main part of the game where you and the other heroes will be attacking your enemies. There are no structured turns. You can play simultaneously or you can choose to take turns in any order. The actions you can take are playing tower cards, passing tower cards, and playing your hero card. You can take any and all of these actions as many times as you are able to. To play a tower card, you take it from your hand and place it on one of your building sites. Usually the site needs to be empty. The exception is soldier towers. You can play a soldier tower on top of another tower or play another tower on top of a soldier tower. Being able to play two towers on the same site can be very helpful because you have a limited number of building sites and some sites might be better locations for your tower cards. Most of the tower cards have directional arrows showing which spaces they can hit, directly in front, diagonally to the side, maybe even an extra space away for ranged attacks. Towers also show what type and how many damage tiles you can place. The Adept Tower places this shaped tile on one horde tray in range. You can't rotate the shape though. The Marksman Tower has the manipulation icon, so you can rotate the shape any way you want. The Bombard Tower can place two small damage tiles, one on a horde tray directly in front and one on a tray diagonally adjacent. Soldier towers don't put out damaged tiles. Instead, you place soldier meeples onto enemies. If you have any tower cards you don't want to play this round, you can pass them to another player. Now, these cards won't be available to play this round, but it's still an important action because you get to upgrade the card before you pass it. You return the card from your hand to the tower supply. Take the next level of that type of tower and place it face down in another player's incoming tower's slot. The third type of action you can take is playing your hero card. When you play your card onto the board, you activate your hero. You can move and take one action in any order. Your player board shows how many movement points you have. If your hero is on your board, you have to spend one of your movement points to place the hero on the path next to an exit. For each movement point, you can move one space orthogonally or diagonally adjacent. You can move along the path, through building sites, spaces occupied by hordes, and empty spaces. You can't move off the map or end your movement on a tower card or portal card. If you end your movement on a horde tray, you directly attack enemies by covering them with your hero miniature. 
You need a 2x2 two two grid space available. Your miniature can't go on top of damaged tiles. Before or after you move, you can perform one action, either your basic attack, a special ability, or recover. Basic attacks work in a similar way to tower attacks. They put down damaged tiles. Some attacks have range arrows. The direction your hero is facing is important for these. Other attacks have the melee symbol and work only on a horde tray the hero is occupying. In some scenarios, you'll have special ability tiles unique to your hero that you can use. Once you use an ability, flip the tile face down. The rulebook describes each ability. If you're damaged, you can use your action to recover. You'll set your hearts back to maximum and flip your special ability tiles face up. After everyone has finished playing their cards and taking their hero action, it's time to move on to phase three, destroying horde trays. Hopefully in phase two, you're able to inflict a lot of damage onto your enemies. In this phase, you're going to follow three steps. First, you remove any horde trays that have all the enemies covered by damage tokens, soldiers, and or heroes. Return the tokens and soldiers to the supply, flip the card over, and gain one crystal token for each crystal icon. Next, each hero that was on a destroyed tray takes one damage. If the hero still has health, leave it in the space the tray had occupied. If a hero loses all of its health, it is knocked out and has to regenerate next round. You'll take the hero miniature and place it sideways on your player board. At the beginning of phase two, in the next round, you get to stand your hero up and regain all of its hearts, but you cannot move that hero or take actions with it. The final thing you do in this phase is check portals. If you destroyed a portal, check your scenario booklet to see if it was the last one. Destroying the last portal triggers the final round. You'll win if your kingdom survives the remaining phases. This brings us to phase four, move horde trays. The horde trays that are still on the board will try to move toward the exit. You'll start with the horde tray closest to the exit and follow these steps. Check to see if any special icons are showing. If you see heal, remove all damage tiles from the horde tray. That one hurts. The speed icon means the horde will try to move two spaces. The dead eye icon means that after movement, the tray will deal one damage to each hero on an adjacent space. Now you try to move the tray. If there are any soldiers or heroes on a horde tray, it doesn't move but the soldiers and heroes take damage. Return the soldiers to the supply. If the tray has a speed icon, a hero on it can block the second movement, but will take a second damage. When a tray does move, slide it to the next space on the path. Make sure the purple line stays parallel to the exit. If it moves onto a space with a hero, place the hero on any adjacent empty building site or path space without a horde tray. If there are no empty spaces, place the hero back on its board. If there's another horde tray in the space that you need to move a tray into, skip that space and move to the next available path space. If a horde tray makes it past the exit, count the number of enemies that haven't been covered and remove that many heart tokens from the kingdom supply. Then flip the escaped horde cards and discard them. If your kingdom still has heart tokens, gain the number of crystals shown on the escaped cards. If your kingdom doesn't have any heart tokens, you lose immediately. Don't let this happen. If your kingdom is still standing, move on to phase five, pick up tower and hero cards. You survived the round, so now it's time to pick up your cards and prepare for the next onslaught. Pick up face down tower cards from your building sites and put them back into your hand. Face down towers are destroyed and returned to the supply. I'll explain how towers are destroyed in the additional rules section. You'll also pick up any towers in your incoming towers slot. These are the upgraded cards passed to you during phase two. And don't forget to pick up your hero card so you can play it again next round. The final phase in a round is phase six spend crystals. 
As a team, you decide how many crystals you want to spend on purchasing new tower cards and which players receive those cards. Level 1 tower cards cost 2 crystals, and level 2 tower cards cost 3 crystals. At the end of phase 6, if you've achieved the scenario's victory condition, you win. If not, you'll begin a new round starting with phase 1, spawn new hordes. Before you jump in and begin Scenario 1, there are a few additional rules you should know. I'm going to talk about attack and defense types and unique rules for portal cards. There are three types of attacks. These are important because some enemies are immune to certain attack types. Physical attacks are represented by the sword icon and red arrows. Enemies with this icon cannot be covered by damage tiles generated by a physical attack. Magical attacks are represented by a spell icon and blue arrows. Enemies with this icon cannot be covered by damage tiles generated by a magical attack. True damage is represented by a flaming sword icon and purple arrows. These attacks can be used on enemies even if they have physical or magical defense. Hero miniatures placed on enemies are considered to have true damage. Deadly enemies can be covered only by damaged tiles, not by soldiers or hero miniatures. Now let's take a closer look at portal cards. In most scenarios, you have to defeat the portals to win the game. Portal cards have a tower level number on the center space. This space can never be covered. It indicates the level of tower needed to attack it. A level 2 portal can be attacked only with towers of level 2 or higher. When you attack a portal with a tower, place the damaged tiles and then turn the tower face down. It has been destroyed and will be returned to the supply in phase 5. Heroes can never end their movement on portal cards or attack portals, so a hero can never place a damaged tile they generated onto a portal card. Portals are tough. They move just like the rest of the horde trays in phase 4. And if one escapes through the exit, you immediately lose. So it's important that you upgrade your towers so you'll be able to fight the portals when they show up. The campaign is 10 games, and if you want to keep track of your progress, you can affix stickers on the kingdom map. So that's Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. Be brave and defend your kingdom from the hordes.